Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, just doing a quick video here talking about a couple of recent roster updates as we go on to our last waiver update uh, before the start of the cap compliant roster season. With all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all the people in Canada. Uh, I knew I said I was not going to probably do a video here, but uh, given the fact that the last day of the waiver uh, news uh, before the rosters have to be finalized, I did uh, decide to do one quick video here. Remember, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. You guys have been so supportive. We're I'm so close to 200 subscribers, so just don't forget to subscribe. Uh, going over here to a quick uh, news update here. So as we talked about yesterday, there were a handful of players placed on waivers. Uh, we'll go to the waiver update first. Uh, yesterday, guys like Jesper Boquist, Oscar Steen, Jacob Zaborl, and Boston, Brendan Biro, Kale Clay, Rally Stillman in Buffalo, Jack Akana, Brad Hunt in Colorado, uh, Trey Fix Wolanski in Columbus, Cam Deneen, Philip Kemp, Brad Malone and Calvin Pickard in Edmonton, uh, Tyler Madden in Los Angeles, uh, Dennis Guryanov and Jack and Klondelik uh, in Nashville, Klondelik for purpose of contract termination, uh, Shane Bowers, Justin Dowling, Tice Thompson and Max Willman in Jersey. And Chris Drieger, Kel Fleury, and John Hayden were all placed on waivers uh, due to being sent down to the minors. No one wound up being claimed. So all those guys, even a couple of significant names like Zaborl, like Biro, who had a decent camp, uh, like Drieger, like Tice Thompson, like Shane Bowers, like Dennis Gorianov, uh, like Tyler Madden. There were a couple of significant names out there, but they all wound up clearing. So that's all the waiver updates from yesterday. So no one wound up being claimed. Today we have a, a huge batch of players being placed on waivers by the NHL team. So here's the current list of players who are going to be placed on waivers today and will have to be cleared or claimed by tomorrow. So you have Andrew Gazzino in Anaheim. You have Alex Stalock in Anaheim. You have Lassie Thompson in Anaheim, who was recently just claimed off of waivers. You have Travis Boyd. You have Ivan Prozertov, and you have Zach Sanford in Arizona. You have Patrick Brown and AJ Greer in Boston. You have Dylan Coughlin in Carolina. You have Joey Anderson in Chicago. You have Riley Tuft in Colorado. You have Riley Damiani in Dallas. You have Zach Aston Reese in Detroit. You have Ben Gleason, Raphael Lavoie, and Lane Peterson in Edmonton. You have Zach Dalpe, Casey Fitzgerald, and John Ludwig in Florida. You have Jared Anderson Dolan in LA. You have Yoel Armia and Gustav Lindstrom in Montreal. You have Bork Johnny Mama in Ottawa. You have Mark Friedman, Magnus Helberg, uh, Vinny Henestroza, Colin White, and Radam Zohorna in Pittsburgh. You have Mackenzie McEachern, Callie Rosen, Malcolm Subban, and Nathan Walker in St. Louis. You have Zach Bogosian and Gabriel Fortier in Tampa. You have Simone Benoit, Kyle Clifford, Dylan Gambrell, Martin Jones, Will Lagesson, and Max Lazois in Toronto. You have Jack Stanichka and Christian Wolanin in Vancouver. You have Gregory Denisenko in Vegas, who was literally just cleaned off of waivers yesterday by Vegas from Florida. And then you also have Cal Calabianco, Colin Delia, and Axel Janssen for Jalbi in Winnipeg. So that's a long list of players who are going to be placed on waivers. Some notable names to watch out for. Uh, Johnson for Jalbi, a decent bomb 6 4. I could see him being claimed. Uh, Delia could be a decent back of goaltender for maybe like a Colorado or uh, Tampa. I wonder if Gregory Denisenko clears waivers and goes to Vegas or if the Panthers reclaim him and then they're going to be able to send him to the minors. Uh, Stadnichka in Vancouver. Uh, he's a solid player. I think he could get a ton of attention from uh, teams around the NHL. Martin Jones is a really good third stringer. I could see the team like Tampa or Colorado claim him. Uh, as well as Simone Benoit, who's a decent uh, third uh, pair, seventh defenseman. I could see someone claim him. Uh, Zach Bogosian is a good third pair defenseman, so I could see someone claim him. Uh, Callie Rosen's a good seventh defenseman. I could see him have some interest. Nathan Walker's a good bomb six forward. I could see him have some interest. Uh, Magnus Helberg's also a really good third string goalie, so I'd be looking out for him to possibly be claimed. Uh, Colin White. Decent bomb six forward. Same with Vinny Stros. I could see those two get a look. You all are me. I think we'll definitely get a look. Uh, but with this over two point three million dollar cap, I think there's a big chance that he doesn't get claimed. Uh, Gustav Lindstrom, who they acquired in the Jeff Petrie trade, is also on waivers. So that's going to be an interesting player to watch out for. Uh, Anderson Dolan in LA. I think is a guy who could definitely get a look. 
uh, as well as Raphael Lavoie in Edmonton. Uh, Zach Aston Reese in Detroit, I think, is a possibility. Uh, you look at Dylan Coughlin in Carolina, he could be a guy who I'd look at. AJ Greer, as well as Patrick Brown in Boston, I could see someone have uh, interest in those guys. Travis Boyd, Ivan Prosvitov, I could see those guys have interest from a couple of different teams. Uh, Lassie Thompson, I do wonder if Ottawa tries to reclaim him to send him to the minors. Uh, Alex Salix, another decent third string goaltender. So there's definitely a handful of uh, significant NHL players out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if by tomorrow morning at 11 p.m. Pacific time, uh, there was a handful of waiver claims, whether it be uh, some of the significant goalies or some of the players. I think there could be a decent maybe four, five, six claims uh, as of tomorrow. So it's going to be interesting to see, but that's your waiver update. No one claimed off of waivers yesterday and a extremely long list of players being placed on waivers today. Uh, going over to a quick PTO update here, uh, three players were able to turn their PTOs into contract extensions. Now, uh, first was Max Willman. We said he was being placed on waivers yesterday, and that's because he has signed a one-year two-way deal with AAV of $175,000. Willman's more of an AHL player. He's been an AHL player during his time in Philadelphia. He's gotten a couple of games of NHL action under his belt, but not a whole lot, so I'll expect Willman to probably go back to the minors. He's already cleared waivers, so he's probably going to be sent to the minors. Miners. They'll probably have a little bit of playing time in the minors. He could be a decent call-up option, which I think is a possibility, uh, but I wouldn't expect him to have an overabundance of NHL time. So I'll expect him to be more of an AHL player, but a, a decent call-up option if they get some injuries in the bomb six. So I definitely like that signing by the Devils. Colin White, who went to training camp with the Pittsburgh Penguins on a PTO, he has now signed a one-year deal, once again, league minimum. Uh, so the Penguins have placed him on waivers today. I do wonder if he gets claimed, uh, but White's a solid bomb six forward. Uh, if there's more injuries in Pittsburgh, we know they're going to start without Gensel to start the season, so uh, I think there's definitely a lot of possibility that uh, the Penguins could look to have some bomb six help. So if there's some more injuries that come in, I could definitely see White be one of the first call-ups if he does clear waivers. I think he's a solid bomb six forward. He just has hasn't worked really well in Ottawa. He, last year in Florida, he didn't get an overabundance of time. So I, I definitely think he'll most likely start in the AHL, but I would expect him to be one of the first call-ups if someone's not doing too well or if there's injury troubles in Pittsburgh. I would definitely expect that. And then Zach Aston Reese, who he said yesterday was let go of his PTO by the Carolina Hurricanes, has now signed with the Detroit Red Wings after being released off of his PTO from Carolina. He goes and signs a one-year $735,000 deal in Detroit and is promptly placed on waivers. So he is going to be placed on waivers today. Uh, another, just like Colin White, probably going to be sent down to the minors. I think there's a possibility he could get claimed. But if he does clear, he's sent to the minors. He's a stalled fourth line slash spare forward. He can definitely play in a versatile forward. He can play in a variety of different situations. I think that's a fantastic signing for Detroit. They already have a deep forward group, so it just makes it that much deeper. And if Aston Reese does clear and does start in the minors, I would definitely expect Aston Reese to be one of their first call-ups, just like Colin White in Pittsburgh. So a couple of really good signings there. There's still a handful of players on PTOs who will either be let go of their PTOs by tomorrow or sign new deals. So it's going to be interesting to see, but three players were able to turn their PTOs into new deals. One player was not. Uh, we have had one more PTO let go, and that is the, the Ottawa Sanders have let go Josh Bailey off of his PTO. So Ottawa is in a really tight cap situation, so I don't think it's overly surprising they did not sign Bailey. Uh, but he's a solid bomb six forward. So if there's some injuries early in the season for a team and they're starting to get a little bit uh, worried about their depth, I could see Bailey be a solid pickup option in season uh, for a team or possibly a guy who signs tomorrow. But uh, Ottawa does wind up letting Bailey go off of his PTO. So that's interesting news there. Uh, a couple of decent roster moves I've seen. We talked about Ryan Evans yesterday. My quick update. Uh, we've also heard the fact that Rusick and Johnson and Buffalo are going to be sent to the minors. Uh, Arizona is sending Dylan Gunther to the minors. Uh, he doesn't need waivers. I'm surprised Gunther wound up going to the minors. He's a solid player. I thought he would have made the NHL roster, but he's going to the minors. Uh, definitely. I, I think there's a couple of surprising players out there who have been sent to the minors recently. So a uh, couple of really good things there. One other quick sign to get to here, and that is Ryan Hartman. We know that last week uh, the Minnesota Wild sent Matt Zuccarello. They signed uh, Marcus Foligno. I said the Zuccarello one was a pretty good deal. I said Foligno probably a little bit too long term, but it's a decent signing. Uh, but the Wild have now signed another pending UFA to an extension, signing forward Ryan Hartman. This signing happened right after my video yesterday, so I didn't get around to touching on it. Uh, but Hartman signs a three-year contract extension with AV of $4 million, which is a significant pay bump from his $1.7 million uh, deal from prior to this. So this is a solid deal. 
Hartman's numbers have been pretty good over the past number of seasons. Uh, he had been a 20 to 30 point player uh, throughout the first part of his career, but the last two seasons he's really broken off. Uh, two years ago, he had a career season putting up 34 goals, 65 points in 82 games. Fantastic. Last year, he was a little bit injured, only got to 59 games, still put up a solid 15 goals and 37 points in that time frame. Had he been healthier, he probably could have hit the 50-point mark at least. So I definitely do like this deal for Hartman. Uh, he's a little bit younger than a guy like Marcus Foligno, so I do like this deal a little bit more. Now, is it overly ideal to sign him to be their top-line center? No, I think Hartman is the top-line center. As much as he's done well with Zuccarello and Kaprizov, I don't think he's their long-term top-line center. But he's a solid center slash winger who I think could definitely fit in the middle six long-term. So, a three-year deal, $4 million, not overly bad in my opinion. I, I do think maybe it could have been $3.5 million, maybe closer to that range. But I think three and a half, four million is probably where Hartman would have definitely gone uh, on the open market next year. So, I definitely do like this deal. And I think this is a fantastic deal, in my opinion, for the Minnesota Wild. So, Hartman signed with the Wild. That was the only other signing besides the three signings, which were PTOs turned into two-way contracts. And we do have one small trade to announce. Uh, the Leafs needing some cap space. We know that they have had some need for some cap flexibility. Have made a trade. They have traded Sam Lafferty to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for a 2025 fourth round pick. So this uh, is a little bit confusing in one way and a little bit uh, not confusing in the other. So for the Leafs, we knew that they were going to have to try and make some sort of move. The most likely thing that has been talked about over the past couple of uh, weeks was Lafferty and Timmons could have gone on waivers. Uh, if they were to waive those two guys, they would be cap compliant. And if they were to waive uh, Martin Jones, move those three players off the roster, they would be cap compliant. Now, Lat Timmons seems to be injured for the next couple of weeks. There's a lot of talk that it could be a little bit longer term. So if it is a little bit longer term, he could be placed in long-term injury reserve, which would get rid of his $1.1 million. And they've now traded Lafferty for a fifth-round pick to get rid of Lafferty's $1.1 million. So with that in mind, uh, the Leafs should be cow compliant now by the start of the NHL season. Uh, probably only going to have a 21-20-man roster, which is not overly ideal. Uh, but I definitely think it was the right move to trade Lafferty with their tight cap situation. Uh, they got a fifth-round pick in return, which is not overly bad. Uh, they acquired Lafferty as long with Jake McCabe and a couple of fifth-round picks. Uh, at the trade deadline uh, this past year in exchange for Joey Anderson, a decent prospect that had since left at first and a second round pick. So a fifth round pick for Lafferty is not overly good, uh, but they get some more draft capital, which should definitely be good for this upcoming draft. And I think this is a fantastic deal for the Leafs to clear some cap space. So the Canucks is a little bit confusing. We know they have abundance of forwards. We know they are also a team that's tight against the cap. So I'm not exactly sure why the Canucks would do this trade. Uh, Lafferty is a decent bomb six forward. He can definitely fit into the bomb six for the Canucks. But a $1.1 million cap hit not being placed on waivers today. I, I am a little bit confused about this move by the Canucks. So it's going to be interesting to see. I wonder if this is a move that corresponds with another move that the Canucks might do over the next day or two. I do wonder about that. But for the time being, it sounds like the Vancouver Canucks are going to acquire Lafferty, who's a solid bomb 640, who showed in Chicago before, he showed in Toronto last year. I, I think this is a fantastic addition for the Canucks. But on top of that, it's another winger, it's another forward. I'm not exactly sure where Lafferty would fit in this lineup, so it's going to be interesting to see. But definitely, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments. That's all I'm going to talk about for today. Uh, what sort of players do you think placed on waivers today could have the best chance to be claimed. Uh, would, were you surprised that any of those players were converted their PTOs into two-way deals? Were you surprised at any of them? Does anyone like the Hartman deal? Is it a good deal or is it a bad deal? And how does the Canucks and Leafs trade work? Do the Canucks come away with the uh, uh, b better side of it? Do the Leafs come away with the better side of it? I think the Leafs get away with uh, clearing a which is good for them. And while the Canucks, it's a little bit of a confusing move, they definitely get a really good steal of a deal, in my opinion, in getting Lafferty for only a fifth round pick. So definitely, going to be interesting to see, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments. But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video once again and subscribe down below. We're so close to 200 subscribers. Thanks for everyone for being so supportive. So don't forget to subscribe. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So definitely check that out. I'll leave links down in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.